Hey everyone, welcome to a brand new video here. Today I'm going to do something a little different. Uh, are you interested in hosting your own dedicated server for you and your friends or you and your family? If so, this is going to be the video for you. A couple things to keep in mind with the way I'm showing you this is this server will be hosted on the computer that you install it in. So if it's your main computer, I would recommend having at least 16 gigs of RAM. And to note, you're also, when you install the server, it's going to install an additional copy of the game. So you'll need that extra hard drive space as well. Um, but anyways, hopefully this video will help you. If it does, uh, go ahead and press that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and let's get into the video. All right, so the first thing we want to do is go to the Arc Server Manager website. I'll leave a link down in the description. Once you're here, you'll click on latest EXE. It'll bring up another window and download like so. You just open that up. You'll get this message here. Just click more info and run anyway. Then you'll have this dialogue. You just go through and click install. I've already got it installed, so it won't do anything there. So I'll cancel out of this and then bring up the program. Okay, so once you have the application open, you'll see unnamed profile. You can name it whatever you want. The installed version won't have anything because we haven't installed it yet. Install location. You just click on set location, put it to wherever on your computer that you'd like that to go. And then we're going to go down here to administration. So server name, you can name it whatever you want. My server, blah, 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 blah. The server password is set by default and the admin password is set by default. Server password is if you want to have a password so anybody can join your server if they have that password. If you don't want a password, just take it out. The admin password is basically going to enable people to use cheats and stuff. Um, if you don't want people to use them, set a password. If you do, you can make that blank. The next section is going to be networking. From here, you'll see your server port and query port. Just leave those as default. And then you'll have your local IP. You let the server server choose for you, but if you need to see what it is, you just click on that and it'll give you a list of your IP. We don't need to do anything with Archon, just leave that alone. The next part is going to be your maps and mods. So you'll click here and select the map that you want to play. If you do want to do a total conversion, you can go here. You can use this button to search for things. And this is your mods. So you'll need the mod IDs. You can click view mod details and you can click this plus button. Sometimes this will work, sometimes it won't. If it does work, you'll get a populated list of mods. If it doesn't, it'll just be blank like this. Okay, so it took a little bit of time, but we did get a population. So you can browse through this and just click the plus to any mods that you want. If you don't get this list up, or if you don't want to search through it, another way to get the mods is by going to the website, the steamcommunity.com, finding the mod. Take this number right here at the end, copy that, close out of this, and just put it in like that. If you want to add another one, you just put a comma and do the next number. Saves, I would leave that at 15 minutes. That's fine. Duration, all that. We don't really need to mess with that, but you do get a lot of options. Um, max players, you change that to whatever you want. And enable timeout, you can change that to whatever you want. I just leave it at default. 
ban list. Uh, Anti-cheat, you can take that off, whatever. I just leave most of this by default here. Um, one thing about the launcher args is that, say there is a holiday event, sometimes you may need to put something in here. Um, basically, I think for the Christmas one, you did something like minus uh, Christmas event or something like that. You'll be able to find more details on that when those events come out. They'll tell you what you need to put in the server args on the actual ARC website. So after that, automatic management, I usually leave this alone. Rules. So here you have some basic rules, enable hardcore, disable PVE, disable PVP. You can set these to whatever your preference are. These are just basically your general settings for the, the game, like use corpse locator, etc. I like to use the enable difficulty override. And basically what I'll do is just make this to 150, which is the max for console users, etc. And I just leave it like that. Uh, enable tribute downloads. Do you want people bringing stuff to your server? They can bring their survivors, their items, or their dinos. Um, allow foreign dinos. Basically what that means is if you if they have a mod that you don't have, that allows you to transfer those over there. Uh, tribute upload. It's the basically same thing, except it gives you more options for items, etc. If they want to take it off of the server, they can. You can allow them to do that. I don't really mess mess with the cluster options. Um, PvP options, that's up to you. All of that. So max players and tribe. Tribe name cooldown. Just general rules here. Um, diseases. You can either keep that enabled or not. And these are your stat multipliers. You can enable the cryopod nerf. Which means, basically... It'll adjust the amount of damage the creature does. Basically, wild card put in that that nerf after you bring them out of the cryopod. You can choose to disable that or enable that if you want. Chat notifications. It's pretty simple. Enable global voice chat. Enable players left notifications, etc. Proximity voice chat. I usually leave those alone if we're going to talk, we usually do so in Discord, but that's certainly up to you. Here's some more of the general options, like allow the crosshair, allow HUD, allow hit markers, show floating text damage, which I love, allow third party person view, and such like that. Now player settings, this is where you're going to be able to increase your XP mods and stuff like that for the players, how much harvest damage they do. I usually leave these alone, um, except for the enable flyer carry. Then we have dino settings. This is going to be the, basically the same thing, except it's going to be for the dinos instead of the players. Uh, I do change the maxed tame tribe dinos just because everyone that plays on my server is in the same tribe, and if we're only limited to 40, then mm, that's kind of not good. So change that to whatever you want. I usually match the max dinosaurs, or try to get as close as possible. Um, you can update their damage, their torpor damage, any of those settings that you could in the regular game. Harvesting damage. Uh, here's the the other part that's really important, allow flyers in cave. You can allow or disallow that. Um, different stuff like that. And you can disable uh, dino writing. You can disable dino taming. I don't know why you do that, but yeah. 
And in here you have dino customizations. You can change what spawns, uh, how frequently they spawn. I normally just leave that one alone. Okay, and so after that, you have your per level increases. I leave those alone. Um, dino breeding multipliers. Now this is something I will change. So the mating interval, um, how often they can mate, the lower it is, the more frequent they can. Mating speed, how fast it is, uh, higher, better. Egg hatch speed, higher, makes it faster. Baby mature speed, higher, makes it faster. Baby food consumption, higher, makes it faster or more often. Dino imprinting, I don't really change the imprinting stat scale. I leave that alone. I leave that alone. Cuddle interval, you can change that. Cuddle grace period and cuddle loose imprint quality. Those are all up to you. So next we have environmental. This is gonna be your standard 2X, 3X rates. You can change it to whatever. You have taming speed, harvest amount, resource respawn, suppress, uh, excuse me, suppress, replenish radius. Basically, if you are near an area as the player, this will stop resources from spawning. So you can adjust that. Um, you can customize how much you harvest things, uh, base temperature, day, time, night speed, stuff like that. Uh, crop decay and crop growth is a good one to change. If you want to move things along faster, poop interval, I usually change that a lot when um, I play Primal Fear. And then you can even change the hair growth speed and how much EXP you earn from different things. Structures, uh, I always disable structure placement collision makes it a little easier to build um, but then you have a few other options here you can go through and look at those now the rest of these I don't really mess with at all if you want to add a custom setting to the INI for some reason you can do so here but I typically don't all right and that's basically all the setup once you've set up um, Although you can do supply crate overrides, um, but you have to be careful about doing that, so I don't mess with that either. But anyways, once you're done with all the setup, the next thing you want to do is go back to administration. And since we're only having that one mod, we'll take that out. Take that out. Alright, so the next thing you want to do after you set the locations and everything is you click install. And so basically what that's going to do is bring up this box right here and it will install everything for you. So we'll go ahead and let that install. All right. And once it's done, you'll get this message here. You can just click out of that. And next thing you'll do is click this start button. And I didn't install it with a map. Don't do that. So we'll go to my other one that I already have pre-made okay and then we'll click this start button here essentially you'll get this dialog box right here and it'll run through all this it'll take a couple minutes to go through and update and everything and I'll show you what it looks like when it's ready all right and so once it's done it should look something like this it'll tell you your cores and everything and then we'll check out in the game how you see to join. All right, so once you're in here, you just click on join arc. I turn this to LAN so that I can see it. And then you just click on here, you'll join, and you put in whatever password, and then you'll be in the game. And if you want to get other people to join your game, you just kind of give them this IP number here all right, and so basically what they'll have to do for that is go to their Steam and click on View and then Servers, and you'll get this box right here to add your server in. All they have to do is press this Add a Server. They type in the IP address that you gave them, and 
this port right here. Once they have that in, the server will show up and they can just click it and join. All right, so now that you have all of that set, you should be good to go. You should have your uh, friends playing with you or your family playing with you. One thing I will mention as well is the port forwarding. Depending on your router manufacturer, you'll have to look up how to do that, but you'll probably need to enable port forwarding for ARC. And you do so with the private IP address that you have and the ports that are shown in the ARC server manager. Hopefully this video was helpful. Let me know in the comments if uh, there's anything I didn't cover or anything else you might need help with. And I appreciate you taking the time. As always, thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.